Hey guys, this is Alessandro with Simple Option Strategies. Today I'm going to talk about how to manage an SPX zero DTE trade. I've been trading these for over a couple of years. What I'm going to be covering today is, you know, all of the aspects of a zero DTE trade and basically my trade plan and some of the risks that you need to be aware of. Okay, let's start with PDT. PDT is the pattern day trader restrictions based on an account that's under 25,000 of usable margin. If you trade futures in the same account, they basically block out the futures to take that into account. So you have to be careful with that. In any case, let's talk about PDT real quick, just to make sure that everybody understands what it is and what the alternatives are to, to avoiding this, because there could be some heavy duty restrictions if, if it happens. So let's define it first. Really what it is, it's the buying and selling or selling and buying of the same security on the same day and initiate on trades. And you can't do this more than four times in any five consecutive day period. All right. You know, toss will kind of keep a, a timer or, you know, the number of trades that you do so that you're aware, you know, when this happens. OK. And so what what can actually happen if your account is below twenty five thousand? You could be potentially, and this is the worst case, right? Restricted to only selling securities uh, and that's for three months, okay? So you don't want to fall into this area. And most brokers will give you get out of jail free <laughs> scripts here for like three times, but you don't, you know, you want to watch this and, and you don't want this to happen to you. So you don't want to be flagged as the PDT account. And how do you avoid this, right? For number one, if you're trading zero DTE for the SPX, it's mostly three times a week, except for under certain circumstances where there's extra days given, like end of month, end of quarter. Uh, if those fall like on a Tuesday, you know, there'll be uh, four zero DTE days. You know, for most stocks, it's really uh, on Friday that they have it, but SPX, it's at least three times a week. And even when there's holidays, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll bump it over to, uh, to an extra day. So you could get a Monday off and then you have zero DTE on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Okay. So you still have three. You can do both sides, uh, but you have to be careful. Again, you know, if you close one side, that's, you know, you're opening and closing a trade. So that counts against you, right? Gives you, it gives you one day trade. Even if you open an iron condor, let's say, and, and close one side, it's still a day trade. Okay. So, so you have to be careful with that. And, it, and if you close both sides, uh, it's, it's two trades in one day. So understand the rules and restrictions and you'll be a more educated trader and, and know how to manage it. Okay. The other way to do this is to manage from uh, multiple accounts. So if you trade in one account and then trade in another on uh, varying days, right. And you close these trades, you won't have the same amount. You, you get basically double the amount of day trades if you do it from, you know, two accounts or more. Okay. I know a lot of people who trade uh, the regular margin account and then IRA accounts on um, they, they switch simultaneously there. Okay. You can trade wide iron condors and we'll talk a little bit about that when we get into the trade plan. You can trade wider con iron condors and you know, you have less risk of uh, having to close the trade and, and, and allow it to expire. The other way to do this is you can trade future spreads and they're not subject to PDT restrictions. Who knows why? So basically the same thing. It's just another way to avoid that. All right. All right. So let's get into uh, zero DTE. Let's talk about the entry first. Okay. Now I generally enter a trade within the first five or 10 minutes. And the reason for that is because the implied volatility is really the highest uh, during that period of time. So you take advantage of that volatility because once that volatility decreases throughout the day, basically the premium uh, price shrinks. And so generally you want to try to get in during that period of time. However, during times of higher volatility, it may make sense, right, to, to wait for the market to establish direction. Lately, had a range bound to down market, and it's really good for iron condors. And so if you get threatened on one side, the other side is good. With higher volatility, things happen, and especially when we have news related events, which we've had a lot of, right? The markets go up, markets go down. Uh, just yesterday, I entered a, a zero DTE and it was a put spread and the market went up, it was doing great. And then all of a sudden the market went down and that happens. You know, just always watch and manage it according to your trade plan. 
All right. So I trade 10 wide with spreads, but I know that there are many that trade 15 and even higher, right? 25 or 50. Most of you know Tammy and others that, that trade these a lot wider. What it does, it gives you less risk as long as you're trading based on the same premium amount. Okay. So the shorter width spreads, five wide, let's say, it really does kind of require you to have more of a understanding of the market direction. And so in those cases, you can trade those, but it's probably better to wait wait on those. However, the risk is the longer you wait, the closer to the market you're going to have to be with your spread and that increases risk. You know, my recommendation is, is that the wider that you can go, the better. However, if you get into the real wide, wide ones and get a market that's really aggressive and, and moves into your threatened position, you're going to be looking at a much greater loss for the distance of the market just because that spread leaves a lot of room in there for a larger loss, right? So it's, it makes sense. The max risk on a five wide is $500 per contract. And for let's say for a 25 for one contract, it's $2,500 for the same risk on that one contract. And so if it gets closer, you're going to have a larger loss. So, you know, things kind of work together in that way. You give up something and take something in return. All right. A wider spread with additional distance allows you better to trade iron condor, you know, rather than trading one side of the trade, just with using one spread. All right. Premium should be between 35 and 70. Now, I usually get in around 45 to 50, around that range. You know, sometimes I've come, gone higher, sometimes I've gone lower. There's a difference between call credit spreads and put credit spreads. The difference is, and, and this is a good time to talk about it here, is that you're going to get greater distance for your put credit spreads than you are for your call spreads. Especially in a bull market, you got to really be careful with call credit spreads because number one, they're going to be closer to the market just because of the way that the premium spreads are devised, right? Generally speaking, the market goes up. However, when it does go down, it do goes down much more aggressively. And so that distance pretty much means nothing, right? If your position is being threatened. A way that you can leverage them, if you have a, you know, a market that's moving in one direction aggressively, you can actually either close your spread and open a new one in the direction of the market, or you can basically roll it to gain additional premium. Okay. It's just one way to leverage it. And I trade with guys that do that a lot. But remember this, a market that's going down will generally implied volatility will go up during those periods of time, you know, especially if it's moving aggressive. So you have a good advantage when the market's moving down. Now, when the market's moving up, your premium's not going to be as great. And what happens is, is that volatility decreases as the market moves higher. And so if you want to leverage that trade and, and say, roll it up, you're going to be closer, much closer to the market than you would be when the trade is rolling down, it's moving down. Just kind of things to keep in mind as you're as you're trading these things. And honestly, you know, I can tell you all these things, but until you get into the market and you really feel it and understand how the premium works and you're looking at it, right? You're you're not gonna have that experience for how to manage these things. And so it's challenging at first. And as I said at the beginning, in the end, you know a lot of things, but the market does things and you just have to be aware of what to do when the market does what it does. Okay. Because it's it's gonna go against you, I guarantee you when you start trading and you want to know what to do when that happens. All right, so let's talk about take profit. I've changed this a little bit in my trade plan because, you know, when the market opens and you've got that nice chunk of premium and then things settle down, you know, the premium goes down pretty quickly. And, and then by noon, basically, you can take most of the time 10 cent gain on it. And usually you'll get that between eh, 12 and one o'clock. You'll, you'll be able to close your trade up most of the time for 10 cents. Now, if the market's moving away from your trade, you can get that much quicker. I've actually gotten 50 cent uh, premium and uh, closed the trade for 10 cents within less than an hour. You know, and that, that happens as long as everything is working in your favor. Now, if you want to take a five cent gain, you're going to wait hours for that. You're going to wait probably until three o'clock before you can get a five cent exit on your trade. And it's, you know, that five cents is just not worth it. You might as well just let it expire if you're going to do that. Um, expiration for wider trades or getting the direction right if only using a vertical spread. So it's okay to let it expire as long as you understand that don't want to let a very profitable trade go against you, especially towards the end of the day because a lot of reversals happen at the end of the day. And so you want to keep that in mind. And I have a chart here that shows just that. And I wanted to share that chart because this happens a lot of the time. So you want to be cognizant of the fact that when a market is, is moving in one direction, it, it tends to overshoot and then come back very aggressively in the other.
other direction towards the end of the day. All right. So let's talk about stop loss and rolls. Right. And so if the market immediately moves against the trade and continues after that trade initiation, you want to figure out a way to get out of that trade. You know, you have to keep in mind is manage your trades based on the worst conditions. Okay. So you don't end up with a max loss. I also work, use uh, in my trading uh, support and resistance areas. And I can tell you like today, the resistance area of the SPX is, is basically 3,400. And if you look at where the market has been all day today, you can look at the market and see that there's a huge amount of resistance at 3,400. And it's important to understand support and resistance, especially with zero DTE, because you want to know where your pain points are, okay? And so if you have pain points and where it's acceptable to put on your trade, right? So today was a zero DTE trade and you had a call credit spread, let's say at 3420 or 3430, you'd probably be fine because every time the market went up to 3400 today, it reversed back down, right? So that's a good example of using support and resistance areas in your trading so that you have more confidence in what's going to happen in the market, even though it could break. But generally speaking, the market respects those support and resistance areas. So you want to use those and have knowledge of using support and resistance areas, right? And when you're rolling these out. Okay, Dwayne has a question. Is there an advantage to rolling versus cutting loss or just putting it on another spread? Dwayne, I can tell you that the most favorable way is really kind of to cut your loss and move on. So if you do roll it, you're not sitting on very, very little margin to be able to even roll it in the future. OK, so keep that in mind on call credit spreads. I can tell you those are a disaster to roll and I really don't recommend it because just think about it in a, in a situation where you have to roll a spread a call spread, let's say, you know, the market's already moving higher. And when markets tend to move higher, they continue to move higher. So you're going to be stuck with a call spread that you probably rolled not too far away from the market because you're not, you know, you're going to have to probably pay for it and then add a put spread on there to compensate for the cost of that. And then you're going to end up, you know, mitigating or managing that trade because the market's going to continue moving higher. And this is what typically happens. And so I really wouldn't recommend rolling a call spread in this situation. And it really is because of premium limitations, because you, you just get less premium as the market goes higher because volatility goes lower. Okay. Those are just the dynamics of the market. So keep that in mind. Okay. So let's talk about uh, actual trades. This is a trade that I did a long time ago, but this happens. This is just a great example of what occurs in a market. I trade a five wide here, right? And I took 40 cents uh, premium on this one. Great question. So I put on this, this was a call spread at 40 cents. Now the market did move against me. Okay. And it went up to this area here. You know, the premium was now 70 cents and it was around 10 o'clock in the morning. And so you can see the initial, you know, it was great, right? The, the market went down and then boom, it reversed right back up to this area. Now I had identified this area earlier in the day. And so I knew that there was resistance here and I was ready to get out of this trade and actually close it. But you can see here that resistance, you know, was several times I tried to break it until the very end of the day. Okay. When the market went way up. So what did I do? I actually... Uh, the market went down after that and I closed the trade around 1045. So I was in that trade very, very short time. Now, even though the market went down, direction, you know, made a difference in this trade. All right. Yeah. So you want to use direction in the market to your advantage if you have it. So I did get out at 10 cents. I made 30 cents on the trade. Now you can see what happened during the rest of the day. The market, you know, if you're, if you're waiting for expiration, you're going to be sweating bullets. If the market goes up into this area, and it was 29.92 and I use futures, by the way, to trade, right? And so it's similar to the SPX, but you can see here that basically a very profitable trade turned into a very non-profitable trade and the market, the SPX was around not 29.90, okay? So five points away from my short, reaching my shorts, you know, call. And, you know, that's, I mean, that's a lot of stress and, and you could have had a loss, a pretty big one here if the market kept going higher. And so the, the issue is, you know, the longer you're in a trade, the, the more risk you have, especially when you have a profitable trade already. And so you want to keep that in mind when you're trading. If you do have enough cycles for your PDT, you know, enough trades, use it and, you know, wait a couple of days and it's going to reset again. You want to keep that in mind. Okay, so this is the one minute chart I'm using here. I want to show it to you on, in terms of a, a five minute chart. Here's what I put on the trade. And then later on, again, it, it moved much higher. And so what happened here? You know, as the market went up here, what I use too is RSI, okay? 
you know, I was watching this and the market continue moving up, but in this case here, it lost momentum. So I have a little bit of confidence here that the market would have reversed. And actually that's, that's what it did. And so here's the same area for the five minute. This area here is implied volatility. Okay. And so you can see at the beginning of the day, boom, you have a spike in implied volatility and then it kind of wanders down. Okay. All throughout the day until around 430 where it picked back up again and the market went down and then volatility went higher as the day went on. So I just want to share a little bit of the charts and how these zero DT trades function and that covers it. So one more question from Maximus you mentioned not to roll call spread. What else can you do if it's the, if it stays against you and doesn't come back to take a profit? The best thing that you can do is as the market is moving up against you, take a loss, just close that trade. And I'm telling you from my own experience, you're going to end up taking more than a max gain many times if you don't close that trade for a loss when the market's moving aggressively higher. Okay. It's very, very difficult to mitigate those trades. And so I mostly put on credit spreads just because of the, the flexibility that I have in managing it uh, one way or the other. And I tend to stay away from call credit spreads. However, in the zero DTE world, you really should be using both, right? Okay. So that covers it for today. I hope this was a value to you and go back, review it. I have more than two years experience trading these things and I've been through everything you can imagine on these trades, right? If you do have a question, you can reach out to me at any time. With this type of trading minimum size account, you don't want to have less than a $3,000 account to do this and trade five whites in that account to do that, all right? Ideally, you want to have an account that's, that's at least 20 to 25,000 to do these trades uh, so that you can trade them small as you learn and trade with small positions so that psychology doesn't affect you, okay? All right, guys, thanks again and have a great rest of the week. Appreciate it.